Hi everyone, I'm Rick Beato. In today's episode, we're gonna split it up between guitar and piano and explore the diminished scale. Both the dominant diminished scale used over dominant seventh chords, otherwise known as the half step whole step, and the tonic diminished scale, which you use over diminished chords, which is the whole step half step scale. We're gonna call this futuristic sounds of the diminished scale. That's next on Everything Music. So let's dive into it. There's a number of different diminished patterns that repeat every four frets. So essentially on the guitar, it's actually laid out really well to play diminished scales. If I take the starting on the D string, the fifth fret, and I play one, three, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, two, four, it will just keep repeating the scale over and over until it returns around on itself. This is what it sounds like. One, three, four, one, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, two, four. It makes it really easy to do patterns that repeat. So if I'm, if I play a lick like this, for example, then move it up four frets, move it up four frets, four frets. Anything that I do. Thing that I'm doing. So I, that was a two part pattern. The first part was second part. Third part was is it's A B A B. So it makes playing lines really easy in some ways. In other ways, it makes it really difficult. There are certain interval combinations that are difficult to play that are within the scale. For example, fourths. If I play fourths in the diminished scale, like this, it's hard to finger. But those are all within the scale. Major sevenths, if I play something like this. Really cool sound, very difficult to play. I try to use as much finger replacement as I can on fourths, for example. So I would play. I do a bar there, but. So that makes it cleaner instead of going. Great sound though. Now you can also do combinations with triads, for example. So I can play. So I'm playing A major, C major, E flat major, F sharp major, so. So what that sounds like. So you can do the same thing with minor chords. There's A minor, C minor, E flat minor, F sharp minor. Then there's the Lydian triads, which is also a cool sound. So knowing all those triadic combinations, so in the in A dominant diminished, you'd have A major, A minor. A Lydian, C major, C minor, C Lydian, 
E flat major, E flat minor, E flat Lydian, and F sharp major, F sharp minor, F sharp Lydian. If you know those combinations, you can combine all those different um, triads and make some really cool lines. So it's just about exploring what is available in those uh, using those different interval combinations. But I try to make lines that sound like they're um, rubbery or whatever. I don't know how you'd put it, but that's why, you know. That kind of stuff. There are eight different diminished seventh arpeggios that will work on an A7 flat nine or 13 flat nine or flat nine flat five chord. Anything that's out of the A half step whole step diminished scale or the A dominant diminished scale is what I call it. A diminished seventh and B flat diminished seventh arpeggio. Here's A diminished seventh. And then B flat diminished seventh. Then I move up to C diminished seventh. And then D flat diminished seventh. Then I move up to E flat diminished seventh. And then E flat diminished seventh, E diminished seventh, and then F sharp diminished seventh, G diminished seventh. And you're back to A. So it's A, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, E, F sharp, G diminished seventh arpeggios will work on an A7 flat nine, 13, flat five chord. So those eight diminished seventh arpeggios, uh, you can use those for improvising. If I just stayed in those different arpeggio fingerings and I play it on it. So if you just use those eight different diminished seventh arpeggios, you could have great lines right there, just alternating back and forth between them. Uh, one will give you the notes of the chord, the other ones will give you the tension notes of the chord. Okay, let's talk about the tonic diminished scale. The tonic diminished scale is used in both jazz and classical music. Usually in jazz, you'll find it just in its root position. So if we're going to use the same notes as we just did with A dominant diminished, we can use B flat tonic diminished, for example, or G tonic diminished, or there's four diminished chords that are based off this tonic diminished scale, starting with a whole step, half step. Okay, the first one would be B flat diminished seven. Second one is C sharp diminished seventh. The third one is E diminished seventh. The fourth one is G diminished seventh. Okay, that's all the same notes. It's just recycled. You take the bottom one, move it up. You know, you go to the next version, and it's just the same collection of four notes. I just moved the bottom note up the octave, went to the second invert, the first inversion, second inversion, third inversion, and then you're back to the tonic position. That's the typical one used in jazz tunes. I'm going E, E major over F, which would be F tonic diminished to F major seven. Or you could simply have it uh, where it's Those are very common moves in jazz. Now, in classical music, it's a little bit different. The use of the chord involves, um, and you can use the same devices in, in jazz as well for improvising, but you typically will have um, more complex chords, and this is where the polychords and things come in like that. Now, in jazz, you're gonna use these polychords in your single note lines and in your comping as well to make your sounds more modern. But you start to get chords like this like A major over B flat. That chord in particular is at the end of Olio by Miles Davis. That's the very last chord. If you listen to the uh, Relaxin record, I believe it's on, you'll hear that chord at the end of the melody. They land right on a tonic diminished chord, A major over B flat. Okay, so uh, there are four sets of triads that are within that scale, and we'll call it for now the B flat tonic diminished scale, which is a B flat whole half scale. B flat, you go up a whole step to C, then half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step. That's the scale. Okay, 
that's where I'm going to derive all these chords from. Now, you can take a bass note like B flat, and I can take these four sets of triads. It's going to be four groups, a major group, a minor group, and a Lydian group, okay? And they're all going to be off the same sets of roots. For example, the first one would be A major over B flat. Then it'd be A minor over B flat. Then it'd be A Lydian over B flat. A Lydian, once again, is A, D sharp, or E flat, E. So all those notes are within that same B flat tonic diminished scale, okay? Then if I go up a minor third to C major, C major over B flat, C minor over B flat, C Lydian over B flat, then I go up another minor third, E flat major, E flat minor over B flat, E flat Lydian over B flat, then I go up to F sharp major, minor, Lydian. Now, the bass note could be any one of these four notes. It could be B flat, then you go up a minor third, D flat, up a minor third, E, up a minor third, G. So I could have A over G would be in that scale, right? The same as E flat Lydian over G would be in that scale. The same as C minor over G or C Lydian over G. So there's all these different chords that are found within that. Now there's also eight different diminished seventh chords found in the scale. Now there's the ones found, there's the ones found based off the roots, like B flat diminished seven, like we already talked about, and then C sharp diminished seven, and then E diminished seventh, and then G diminished seventh, all four of those. There's also a second set of diminished seventh chords that's built a half step down below the root. So it'd be A diminished seventh, C diminished seventh, E flat diminished seventh, and F sharp diminished seventh, okay? So it'd be these chords are within there too. So A diminished seventh, C diminished seventh, E flat diminished seventh, and F sharp diminished seventh. Now, those chords can actually be played simultaneously as polychords, essentially. If I take an A diminished seventh chord and I put a B flat diminished seventh chord under it, it sounds like this. Okay, so you get A diminished seventh, B flat diminished seventh. That's more of a modern classical sound, okay? Like this. So you've got. It also sounds cool if you were to put it in the orchestra, these kind of chords, okay? So let's say I do that. Uh, po that polychord like this, A diminished seventh over B flat diminished seventh. Or if I, I could do, I do, or I could do, or I could do. Okay, so right there I did F sharp Lydian over B flat. Really cool sound. But these uh, these cluster sounding sounds, which are really not clusters, they're actually polychords that are found within that scale. Like I said, B flat diminished seventh over A diminished seventh. Or invert them, where I reverse them, which would be like this. So these are really cool to use in your modern classical writing. They can be played anywhere on the keyboard in any combination. I used was using B flat and A, but frankly you can use G, you can use any combination of any of these. You can use um, G and F sharp diminished seven. It's all the same notes though. Since it's a symmetrical scale, they repeat every minor third. Both chords will, so you can come up with a lot of really, really cool sound. Here's a little etude I put together based on the B flat, D flat, E, or G tonic diminished scale. Check it out.
That's all for now. Subscribe here and at my Everything Music Facebook page. Also, check us out on Patreon. If you want to support what I'm doing here and you want the PDF of the etude from today's episode, it'll be on my Patreon page. Also, check out the Beato book. There's a link for that. It's my theory and guitar book that's 305 pages long. Three quarters of it is music theory, and it talks about the concepts that we're talking about here. That link is available in the post below. Thank you. I'm Rick Beato.